Oh, I'm definitely excited about this one today. I'm definitely excited about this one. Hello, everyone. We're here again. Good to see you. Well, even though I can't see any of you, but it's good to know that you're listening. Uh, last episode, actually, was getting downloaded a lot. So thank you for everyone who, uh, who listened last week. Um, the last episode that we had, uh, there was nothing but the file, which if you watch episode one, more than likely it was because I sent you that file. So now it has changed. Now we are on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Just look for Smells Like Cologne, spelled in one word, cologne being the a-hole, not the sweet-smelling fragrance. That's the point of the name, if any of you guys haven't figured that out already. But uh, that's how you would search for it. Um, that would be the best way to know about all the new episodes as they come out. My original plan was every Friday. Then I was like, you know, maybe we could do it like twice a week, maybe like a Wednesday or Friday. So I, as I'm recording this right now, it's a Wednesday. Um and I like to record just the first take and publish it, and that's pretty much it. So, um, um, but if you're subscribed, if I end up putting out an impromptu episode or end up not keeping any sort of real schedule, um, this would be the best way for you to be notified immediately, which I'm pretty sure everybody who I sent knows what subscribing is already. I'm just explaining it. Because that's all I know how to do is just explain uh, tech shit. Anywho, um, this week's episode um, is coming inspired from an email that I got from one of you listening. Uh, I will read out that email because it actually had a couple of uh, good ideas. Um, and I actually used one of those ideas for this episode. So... Sent in from Caitlin, uh, the email reads, long-time listener, first-time caller, and then leaves a list of certain ideas for future episodes. So, um, I wonder if I should read them all. Mm. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I'm going to read them all, and if... Someone out there maybe doesn't have an idea for what to do for a future episode and likes one of Caitlin's ideas, uh, send me an email and let me know. And I will uh, put that in the rotation because it's kind of cool to hear what you guys want. And to quote, Exc uh, to quote Excalibur, who is a, uh, an announcer on AEW because I like my pro wrestling, uh, you got to give the people what they want. So, oh, you know what? That's what I wanted. I was, well, I'll do that next time. I was surprised. So, anywho, so one of the ideas that Caitlin uh, suggested was a top 10 list. Didn't specify what, but like a top 10 for, as, as it says, Cologne's top 10, and in parentheses, a top 10 countdown for random topics. So, I took the liberty of picking a random topic and using the basis of a top 10 as the structure for it. So, thank you very much, Caitlin. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Today, it's a top 10 for me. Now, if any of you know me well enough, you know that I have many passions in life, for I'm a passionate individual. One of those passions is my passion for TV and film. Love my movies. Love my television shows. Speaking of, um, I am on the TV Time app. Um, I know for anyone using iOS out there, it is 100% available on the App Store. For those using Android, I don't know, but I can only assume so. Um, it is a fan. It's my favorite app. Uh, I use it to keep track of... And this isn't a sponsorship or any of that shit anyways. I'm just letting you know what I like. God damn it. Um, this is an app that I use to basically uh, keep track of all the shit that I watch. Because I watch a lot. I watch a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, it lets me know what shows I've watched. It lets me know how much time I've spent watching shows. It lets me know what shows I watch based on genre, based on what streaming service or channel that I use. It lets me know the shows that I've made for ratings. It lets me know my favorite shows. It lets me show, know shows that I, I've started but haven't finished yet. It's an awesome app. Um, 
if you end up downloading it and you're a TV junkie like me, I would, uh, well, first of all, I would suggest downloading it if you are a TV junkie like me. Um, and if you want to see what I'm watching and what I've been watching and what I'm going to be watching and my favorite stuff, you can follow me on there. The, it is EMC4K. That's uh, Echo Mary Charlie 4 Kilo. Uh, you can follow me on there. Um, and yeah, and uh, it's I, I love this stuff. So it'll be cool to follow along with people and see who's watching what. I love getting inspiration from other people as to what they're watching. 90% of the shows that I watch are shows that I've gotten suggested from other people. Uh, 10 I just kind of find on my own. Uh, but yeah, uh, definitely check out the app. It's a lot of fun. And if you want to follow me on there, uh, I encourage it because I watch a lot of good shit. So anywho, back to the top 10. Um, this one I did on television shows. Now, there were a couple of pieces of criteria for this list. Number one, the show had to have a beginning and an end. And by that meaning, um, yeah, it had a beginning and a freaking end. All right. A lot of good shows that are out there, especially if you watch Netflix, which is my big complaint with them right now. A lot of shows that you watch out there, they maybe they get one, two seasons. Maybe you like them and maybe not enough people like them. Maybe the network didn't like them. Maybe the ratings weren't good. And they end up not making that far. There are some shows that I am watching right now that um, uh, have the potential to be on this list, um, but they're not done yet. So uh, you need to know how a finished you know, you got to know how it ends. You got to see everything for the entire the, the entire shebang. You can't go two seasons. Like, if I've invested, like, two, maybe three seasons into a show, like, I'm invested. That's it. I, I'm, I'm trying to remember the last show that I, I actually abandoned. I think it was uh, American Gods. I, I don't know what the hell was going on with that show. It had one showrunner in the beginning, the guy who did Hannibal. Um, Hannibal's a great show, by the way. Didn't make the list because... I think it got canceled in season four, or, or at least there's enough renewal talk to know that there was more story to go with. Um, I thought it was a fantastic show. Didn't make the list. Maybe I'll do an honorable, men uh, honorable mention list one day. Um, but yeah, you got to see the genuine article. You want to know what is the most cautionary tale for a show that was awesome and was continued to be awesome? Actually, there's a lot of cautionary tales, but I'm going to say two in particular, two, two infamous ones. One was Dexter. That show was great all the way up until, like, oh, my God. I'd say after Jordan Chase, the season with Julia Stiles. After that, I don't know what the fuck that show was doing, but that went off the rails. I mean, they are going to come out with another final season, but I felt like, uh, you know, we already broke up and you want to kind of get back together, but, uh, you know, I'm about next, not X. You know what I mean? So, um... Yeah, but I mean, I'll still watch it because if they, you know, who knows? Wait until we see the whole end. So if this final season somehow redeems that atrocity of a final season and the mediocre maybe one to two seasons beforehand, you know, eh, maybe I'll go on the list because the first couple of seasons were awesome television. Any of you who watched Dexter, I think, I think would agree to that. The second one. The second one is, I think, one I know that a lot of people listening are knowing and those who have yet to listen. Game of fucking Thrones. <sighs> that, sh that, show, that show was one episode away from being on the list, people. One episode away. Not one season, one episode away. I was all for it. I was all for it up until the end. I mean, at this time, can I even, I mean, at this point, can I even talk about the ending? Is it, it going to be that sensitive if I decide to, like, spoil the ending? But I'm telling you, like, I see what they were trying to go for. I, I, I guess I'll, I'll try and put it as broad a terms as I possibly can. I see what they were trying to go for. They figure the show had a history of no one being safe, no one 100% getting what they want, always missed chances at vengeance or valor or this or that. And I kind of felt like maybe they just thought it would be a witty idea just to keep that theme for the ending. And they just gave everyone a huh, a so-so ending. You know, some people got some things. Some people got other things. Some people who you wanted to have a lot got a little. And some people who you didn't want to have as much as they got got more than they thought that they deserved. All right? Um. So, yeah. I mean, I guess I'll maybe I'll read the books and maybe there's some sort of different ending. But, like, Christ almighty, man. What a shame. 
What a shame. I remember watching those final episodes and they were all like movie length. Some of the best shit I have ever seen and like finally was building somewhere. Like I give them props. I honestly do. I give them props to keeping how how, how much they were going to fuck us raw all the way up into the end. Genius. Ingenious. Ingenious. But, you know, I digress. So one of the things was that it had to be a show that I watched from beginning to end. Another one, and this one's kind of loose, but most of the shows on this list follow this criteria. Um, I wanted to, I, uh, to watch the season again from beginning to end. If it was that good, then I would want to commit m- more hours to watching it again. I feel like it deserved to be up there. Um, I guess that's what makes this list a personal top 10. Um, I recommend this, these shows... I wouldn't say to everybody because some are niche shows, you know, like some like you got to like certain things to get it. Um, Gosh, I would love. I will say this, though. Eric, fun fact number like 102 is that I love uh, curating movie lists for people. It's like, I don't know. It's like a bartender who knows your favorite drink. Like, I wish there was a profession for that. I wish someone could be like, Eric, I need something to watch. Like, what? Like, what should I watch? These are shows that I like. What do you think I'd be into? These are movies that I like. What do you think I would be into? These are genres that I like. What do you think I'd be into? So, you are, guys are more than welcome to send me an email. Smells like at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to know what certain, certain uh, shows that you should watch and invest in. And uh, I'll answer that shit on there. Absolutely. Um, I'll, put my, uh, yeah, I'll put my reputation on the line for those. I think I have a pretty good track record of... Uh, if I know you well enough, <laughs> I have a pretty good track record. So, anywho, uh, here we go. Top ten favorite shows for me. Um, the f- last grouping of five, I would say I'm putting in no particular order. The top five are in a, are in a particular order as to what I think is the greatest show I've ever seen up until like the fifth greatest show I've ever seen. So here we go. Um, number ten. Like I said, no particular order, just the final five or whatever. Number 10, Strike Back. Strike Back is an awesome show. Strike Back is the most machismo show I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, number one, if, there, if, if this is any ten, uh, a hint to what the show is like, it was on Cinemax. All right? Now, before anyone knocks Cinemax and be like, Eric, you pervert. Um, number one, it's not just, there's more to Cinemax than Skinemax, okay? There are actual very good shows on Cinemax. I mean, granted, Cinemax now is no longer an entity per se. Um, they kind of got, I don't know, they got, like, once HBO Max came about, like, that was it for Showtime. I mean, uh, f- um, uh, for Cinemax. Uh, but Cinemax had some very, very good shows. Two of those shows are on this very list. And one of them is on a very high point on this list. Spoiler alert. So, anywho, alert, Christ. <clears throat> Um, Strike Back was an awesome show. Uh, uh, for any of you gamers out there, if you've ever played the game Army of Two, imagine Army of Two in real freaking life. That's what it was. Now, uh, Strike Back originally was a show on the BBC starring Andrew Lincoln. Now, Andrew Lincoln, as you all know, plays Rick Grimes on The Walking Dead, or did play Rick Grimes, or kind of still plays Rick Grimes, depending on who you talk to. Um... Strike Back was an awesome show. It was about a American Special Forces soldier and a British SAS soldier. And basically, to give the premise, you know, fate brings them together. I don't want to say fate because fate kind of sounds cheesy. But, you know, circumstances bring the two of them together. And they end up joining this special branch of uh, um, of the British military called section 20 section 20 were the ones that you send in to get the jobs done that nobody could get done and it was like what can i compare this to i would say like if 24 were globe trotting wasn't done in real time you know it was just shot like a regular show and was a thousand times it had all the bli- the the violence and swearing and sex that you couldn't have on a regular television it was an awesome awesome show now the first Four seasons had one cast, and the final two seasons had a different cast, um, but every season was awesome. So if you like action, if you like explosions, if you kind of like... I wish there was another show that I could... 
what would be a show that could be like, I don't know, there really isn't a show like Strike Back. It was just really good. It's very pulpy, very violent, stuff like that. It's just an awesome show. So if you like action, you like stuff being blown up, um, you know, like Avengers are two soldiers going around the world, stopping terrorists and, and, and doing spy shit. Great, great, great show. I would uh, strongly recommend it. So Strike Back makes, makes the list at number 10. Um, number nine, again, not in any particular order. Penny Dreadful. Penny Dreadful was a, I don't say this often about shows or I don't say this using these particular terms. Penny Dreadful was a beautiful show. Uh, Penny Dreadful, I would recommend to those who like Victorian horror. Um, Frankenstein, The Wolfman, Dracula, stuff like that. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, Eric, you're having me watch Van Helsing the show. Wrong. You are wrong. Shame on you. You are not watching Van Helsing the show. It was, uh, it was just, it was, it takes place in Victorian London. It does have creatures from Victorian horror like Dracula and the Wolfman, but they're not, aside from one character, they're not, well, maybe two. Uh, they're not known really by those names, you know? Um, there were, it was just a great show. Um, now, a spinoff show came out about it called Penny Dreadful City of Angels. That lasted one season and got canceled. It kind of had potential, but <sighs> it, just, it, 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 it wasn't doing it. It wasn't doing it for me. But Penny Dreadful, like the original one, I believe it was, let me check right here. Penny Dreadful was three seasons, all right? And there were not very many episodes per season. Season one had eight episodes. Season two had ten. And season three had nine. Uh, I thought it was fantastic. Um, uh, I think Ava Green is my wife. And I want to marry her and I love her. Um, she is abs- I think Ava Green, number one, is absolutely gorgeous. I think, number two, she's a phenomenal actress. I don't think there's very many things that I saw her, I've seen her in that I didn't like. Um... And she just throws herself into a role. I'm telling you, like, she was made for this universe. She fit it perfectly. She was fantastic. She's the, uh, I would say, like, the leading character of the series. Uh, Josh Hartnett was in it, um, who it was really cool seeing him in this kind of role. You normally see him in, like, I don't know. I mean, like, you, you know, you see him, you think, like, Black Hawk Down or whatever. Like, I don't really know what other, oh, and, like, Pearl Harbor. You know, stuff like that. Like, this This was great. This was a great, great show. Three seasons, very short, uh, very tragic, but in, like, a in a beautiful way. Like, I like it was just very poetic. The script was beautiful. Um, the uh, the soundtrack to the show was absolutely haunting. It was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, well-written, well-directed, well-casted. Uh, costumes were great. Settings were phenomenal. Definitely, definitely recommend. Penny Dreadful. It was on, it's on uh, Showtime. Uh, three seasons, so uh, definitely check that out. Um, number, what is this? Ten, nine, eight, eight, eight. Next one, whatever. Homeland. Homeland, another Showtime show. Awesome. Homeland would be like if twenty, if you got rid of all the action in twenty four, that's kind of what it was. Um, starring Claire Danes, playing a CAA officer. Uh who is bipolar and you know obviously you know like they throw in that thing where like she's only brilliant she can only figure out like what the terrorist plans are and what kind of terror attack is happening and who's doing what to who when she's off of her pills so it's like she's brilliant but it's like a tortured brilliance you know what I mean like her brilliance comes at a cost and man she pays a lot what a show um Homeland was, gosh, that just finished. Um, I believe it was four seasons. Eight seasons. I take it back. Wow. Time flew by. Eight seasons on Showtime. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, who was the other guy who played Brody? Um, Damian Lewis. Damian Lewis. Damian Lewis was uh, in another show on this list. Um, Damien Lewis is a phenomenal actor. Uh, he's in Billions, 
which if that show has a great ending, that would 100% be on this list because Billions is freaking phenomenal. If you aren't watching it now, you should 100% watch it. It's been a really long hiatus because it's filmed in New York and because of uh, you know COVID or whatever, like they really couldn't do a lot. Phenomenal show. You should definitely watch it. Um, also, Succession, if you like those kinds of shows. Brilliant, brilliant show. Um, but yeah, Homeland, awesome show. The characters were like, you just... Oh, man, the character development for so many characters were great, especially for Carrie, uh, who is uh, Claire Dane's character. Uh, phenomenal. Uh, Peter Quinn, who was played by Rupert Friend, his character was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, phenomenal. Uh, Saul Berenson, who was played by Mandy, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Pettikin. Pettinkin. There we go. Um, phenomenal uh, in the show as well. Uh, I can't say enough about it, but... Um, it starts off, and I guess I could I could say this because this is the premise. It starts off that she suspects that a marine hero who is played by Damian Lewis um, is a terrorist and was turned by Al Qaeda, and basically just starts her down this freaking rabbit hole of a whole bunch of shit. So this guy, he's a prisoner of war. He comes back, you know, hero, you know. Tortured, blah, 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 all this stuff. Came back hero. But is he? Is he a double agent? Did they break him? Tune in to find out. But that was a great show. Uh, great, 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 great show. Uh, next one. Another show that had Damian Lewis in it. This was a limited series show, so I guess you could say it was only... Uh, you know, it kind of snuck in because it really was a limited series show. It only had one season, but I mean, this show was just, I don't know, man. It was special. It got me like, there's some shows that get you emotional. This show got me emotional. Band of Brothers. I want to, can I, is this, is this still on here? Hold on. There we go. If anyone saw this show, did you hear this theme song? Doesn't it give you the chills? Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks. So they already did Saving Private Ryan, so you know it's awesome. I, 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 man, I don't even know. That, that cast was so huge. And look at this. It's beautiful. <laughs> I just want to cry. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. All right. Um, Jesus, who? There's so many people in that show. Damian Lewis was in that show. Uh, Donnie Wahlberg was in that show. Um, David Schwimmer was in that show. Oh, God. Kirk Acevedo was in that show. Tom Hardy was in that show. James McAvoy was in that show. Um, who else? Jesus. Um, Neil McDonough, who he's in so many evil... Like, he's just the guy with the blonde hair who has evil, sharp, blue-looking eyes who's in every movie. I'm, I, I, he, he was the bad guy in Walking Tall. He was in it. Um, God, who else was in it? Simon Pegg was in it. Oh, uh, Jesus. How many people were in this in this show, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people that you were, um, Colin Hanks was in that show. Tom Hanks's son was in it. Um, obviously, it was a story of Easy Company during their time in World War II. Uh, if you are a fan, obviously, if you're a fan of Saving Private Ryan, you 100% have to watch this show. It's one of the greatest war television shows of all time. Um, spliced together with actual testimony of the actual characters that are being played on the show, which is absolutely fantastic. The, like, they were able to get the actual veterans from that this show was based on so that they could do testimonials for it. And they don't tell you who they are until the end. So you notice you're going to see the same faces talking about... You know, it, you know, like they give a prelude to the episode. What battle happened here? Starvation happened there. Someone died. Someone got injured. Someone this, someone that. And they're giving you all of these, you know, they're giving you all the preludes to all the episodes. But you never know which of these guys are the actual guys you're seeing on screen until the final episode, which was really awesome to finally see the reveal of who it was that you were, that you liked, that you hated, that you thought was this, that you thought was that. <sighs> so good. So, so good. Band of Brothers makes the list. Um, I guess number six, right? Yeah. Number six. Um, short, sweet, to the point, and the only Marvel show that makes the list, The Punisher. John Bernthal is the man. 
John Bernthal is an awesome actor. Everything that he's in is awesome. He's been in two Taylor Sheridan movies. One was Wind River, which was a phenomenal movie. You guys should definitely check that out. There'll be a movie list in the future. Um, he was also in Those Who Wish Me Dead with Angelina Jolie, which is on HBO Max right now. Uh, I believe it was an HBO Max exclusive. HBO Max is killing it, by the way. HBO Max is killing it. Um, that was, it was just awesome. I mean, if no one knows the story of the Punisher from the comics, I mean, the Punisher is Frank Castle. Uh, he is a special forces soldier. And long story short, his family gets murdered in front of him. And he goes on basically a lifelong crusade against anyone who is a piece of shit. <laughs> Anybody, anybody. He goes to a door. He goes through a door, and some guy's selling something he shouldn't or anything. He's taking that motherfucker out. Uh, Punisher was awesome. It was two seasons, two, because I believe at that point um, the Disney Marvel deal was kind of expiring, and that was sort of it. But that was the best of the Disney Marvel shows. I mean, definitely there was, uh, you know, Daredevil was great. Um, Depending on who you talk to, Iron Fist was good. I liked Luke Cage. Um, I thought the second season was awesome. I thought the first season, the first half of it was good, and the second half of it was dog shit. Um, but uh, Luke Cage was awesome. Jessica Jones, good first season. Second season, an abomination. An abomination. That show sucked, all right? The first season was good because David Tennant was on it. David Tennant held the entire show. And, oh, yeah, Kristen Ritter is in it. But the second season... It was doo-doo, all right? So don't even bother. Anywho, uh, Punisher, awesome show. Um, the prelude to Punisher was actually in the second season of Daredevil. So if there are certain, there are going to be certain characters that show up in Punisher that have a history with Frank Castle, and that history was hashed out in that second season of Daredevil. So uh, if you're a Marvel fan and you've been watching all the other Marvel shows on Netflix and haven't gotten to Punisher, you have the basis laid out. Do I believe you could watch Punisher without watching those other shows? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. The stories were pretty centered around just Frank Castle. Like, it really didn't have to do too much with any other characters in that quote-unquote universe. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, Punisher was an awesome show. Um, I don't know, man. Looking back, I could have swapped out Punisher with, like, Fringe, maybe. You know? Fringe was a great show. Fringe was... Like the modern day X Files, I think that was like five or six seasons. I think it was on Fox, which is great because not a lot of network shows are worth watching. To be quite honest, a lot of those network shows are shit uh, because they're just made by focus groups, and they think you, they think they know you, and uh, they don't know shit. Um, no, is it here? No, it's not on the list. I'm surprised I didn't put that on that list. It's a little bit of a shame. No, is it here? No, no, no. Can I look it up? Sure can. There we go. Fringe was five seasons. Uh, and the seasons were, you know, network length, like 12, 13 episodes a season. Uh, actually, season two was 23 episodes. Jesus Christ. I forgot that network shows that long. Yeah. Say, okay, so they definitely bought them on for like a lot, a lot of uh, episodes after the first season. Because season three was like 20-something episodes. Season four was 20-something episodes. And season five is, of course, a shortened 13. <laughs> I honestly, I swear to God, I think they do this now. I think they make final season short so they don't, like, put too much rope for them to hang themselves with when it comes to plot and story. Uh, but whatever. Uh, whatever. Um, all right. The top five. The top five. Oh, man, these are some good ones. These are ones that I don't think I would ever regret putting up on the top five. Uh, none whatsoever. All right. So, number five. If you're fans of the show, you will know this right off the bat. Vikings. Vikings was awesome. Vikings was a little bit of a sleeper hit because it's on the History Channel. For number one. Uh, I remember in the beginning, people like, yo, you watch Vikings? I'm like, oh, what channel is it on? Oh, uh, History Channel. Ah, fuck off. 
<laughs> I was like, no way. No way, no how. History Channel comes out with bullshit. I don't want to see it. There's nothing good that could come entertainment-wise from History Channel. And uh, I don't say this wrong. I don't say this often, uh, but I was... <coughs> uh, sorry. Uh, I was... <coughs> oh. oh, Jesus. This is harder than I thought. I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. Now, um, for the record, a History Channel did end up, I think, canceling it, and then it got bought by Amazon uh, to finish the final, I think, se- one to two seasons, I think. Maybe the final season. I'm not sure. Uh, F- Vikings was awesome. It was like if Game of Thrones didn't fuck itself over. That's how I would put it. If you like large ensemble casts, you like medieval battles, backstabbing, politicking, all that good shit with horses and people dirty and there's no medicine around and, like, if someone gets, uh, you know, like, wounded, like, that's it, it's over, cut the leg. Um, that show was great. Uh, Travis Fimmel, basically, that show made him. Um, what was, uh, oh, Catherine Winnick, that show basically made her. Um, Alexander, oh, I forgot his last name, but the he's the dude... What other movie was he in? He was in Bad Boys for Life. Uh, he was the big jack motherfucker who just like only like he was nonviolent, but he found the job on a um, on a tactical squad. Whatever. Um, that dude, I forgot his freaking name. Um, awesome show. If you like, like I said, if you like if you like Game of Thrones and you just want to see a show like that end up, you know, like finish strong. Vikings, hundred percent. Um, don't be fooled like me and think, eh, history channel, uh, nah. Now, um, man, I like, I can't even say that the, that it was low budget even from the first season, but you could definitely tell, tell that as the show gained in popularity, um, it, uh, they started getting more money for that budget. Uh, absolutely. By the way, if you are a fan of Vikings and you haven't seen this show, uh, The Last Kingdom on Netflix, incredible. Um, basically the same story, but from a different point of view. Oh, I forgot we even really talk about the premise of Vikings. Uh, Vikings is centered around Ragnar Lothbrok, and it, I guess, you know, it's a dramatization of the history of Vikings, all right? So some of the stuff that happens on the show, yes, is based in reality, and certain things that they did and accomplishments that they made, yes, if you look up in history, it is real. All of it's completely dramatized on the show, obviously, so I would not study the show and take a history exam on it, uh, on, on it based on it. No way. Um, but, uh, he was just someone who just dared to break the traditions and cycles of Vikings and literally ended up bringing that whole civilization to worldwide and historical fame and notoriety. Him his sons, his sons' sons, all that stuff. They are making a spinoff of this on Netflix, I believe ma- done by the same creators, uh, but definitely I would check this out. Now, Vikings had how many seasons? Maybe six? Ah, oh, spot on. Six seasons. Uh, 20 episodes in the first, oh, 20 episodes in season six, but I think that was because it was a split. It was two seasons. Uh, first episode, uh, the first season only had nine episodes. Second season only had ten. Third had ten. Fourth was a long season. Fourth had twenty. Um, the fifth, which was, I mean, in my opinion, my favorite season, uh, was twenty episodes, and the final season, which was six, also had twenty episodes. Uh, definitely worth the time committed to watch it. Um, any of the shows that I mentioned that were on like, like premium cable, like Cinemax or Showtime, those are hour long episodes. Um, the rest of them, like, um, you so strike back hour long episodes, same thing with Penny Dreadful and Homeland and Punisher, um, and Band of Brothers, sorry. Um, but Vikings, Vikings, since it's a, it was on television, the majority of those episodes are around 40 to 45 minutes because of commercial breaks, except for the final season, season six, those were full hour long episodes because they were produced and distributed on Amazon Prime. Um, speaking of Amazon Prime, I just want to put something out there. The Expanse. <sighs> Got to watch that show. Got to watch that show. It would be on this list if had, if it had ended, but it hasn't ended yet. I think we still have one to two more seasons left. 
So uh, Amazon has a lot of great shit. I should definitely um do a list of like top shows on each like streaming platform because there's like the streaming wars are free. Like this is the golden age of television, people. The golden age. Like we're getting like the best qual. Like we're getting movie quality shit on television with like movie Hollywood actors, and like it's getting to the point where you just can't. Well, that's a discussion for another day. But long form storytelling is great because it allows better character development and things to simmer and set in. Uh, I, it's definitely a skill to do that with only an hour and a half to three hours when you do a full feature movie instead of like twenty hours, obviously. Um, so I have Beth, I have respect for both uh, for both uh, both TV and film. Um, but like lately, I don't know. It's been it's been great. It's been great. Like, ever since the rise of HBO and, like, Sopranos and shit like that, like, that was great. And that show's not on the list because that ending sucked. All right? I know a lot of you people like that show, but I don't... I, I, are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding me? And, you know, uh, and then a lot of the shit that they got into is just because they're a bunch of... They were just a bunch of meatheads sometimes. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Just the shit that they cared about. That's what got... Anywho, whatever. I digress. <clears throat> Television show number four, Supernatural. Huh. Supernatural. I, you know, I am not ashamed to admit this. I am not ashamed to admit this on on, on the podcast. Uh, that show made me cry. The final episode, I wept. All right, and I'm a hard nosed motherfucker, and that show made me weep. Supernatural lasted, Christ, fifteen seasons, I think, fifteen or fourteen. 15, right? Am I right about this, Eric? I am right. 15 seasons. Now, oh man. Now listen, I know that's a lot to ask anybody. Um, I did not start watching that show until, God, um, season four, I think. Season four, season five, um, I got them on DVD, <laughs> um, and uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think my, I think my girlfriend at the time, her dad introduced me to it, and he was just like, "Oh, you like, you know, you like monsters and shit like that." I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I checked it out for his sake. God, man, I'm so glad I checked that out. Fifteen seasons. Listen, I'm gonna tell you this right now. A lot of one shots, but the one shots are great. The one shots are awesome. Um. They, are, they have a lot of what I call filler episodes. There are some episodes that have the meat of the plot. Obviously, each season has a big overall story arc that you follow. Um, but, you know, in between there, there's, you know, the, uh, you know, the case of the week, the monster of the week. You know what I mean? Uh, two brothers hunting supernatural monsters. Now, this is a little bit more campier than, like, Penny Dreadful. Penny Dreadful was a very somber look at Victor at like creatures of the night. You know what I mean? Um Sam and Dean Winchester uh Win- Winchester. <laughs> uh Sam and Dean Winchester, uh they were two badass motherfuckers. All right. Two brothers hunting monsters. It's the family business. Um that song, uh Carry On My Wayward Son, was is the song that they play at the beginning of every season finale. Every season finale has played that song. Um so uh I had to put that in there. Um but yeah, uh, Supernatural, incredible show. If you need like a show that you kind of just want to, I don't know, man, I, I don't know how to explain it, but it was, it was just, I guess like if you're a fan of like Buffy, Angel, you know, like those kind of like Channel 11, CW, you know, WB, long shows that are like kind of soap opera-ish, but kind of have action or whatever. Like, if you're a fan of Buffy or Angel, you should 100% be watching Supernatural. I'm sorry, you should 100% be watching it. Um, But it was just, for I would say Supernatural had one bad season. 15 seasons, only one bad one. That says something. Um, Which season was that? So I could tell you which one to skip. (laughs) Um... It's got it. I, it was definitely like smack dab in the middle. No, was this it? No. Maybe it was eight. Was it season eight? Was it season eight? I don't know. Maybe not season eight. 